What's going on there, guys? Good evening. Well, good afternoon, I should say. Good morning. Maybe some good evening to some out there. It's the Earthmaster here on this Thursday. Uh, it is July 14, 2022, about 11.58 a.m. California time here. Latest quake shows a 2.4 earthquake into the area of Southern California. This comes after a 3. Point, looks like they downgraded it to a 3.2, originally a 3.3 earthquake coming in. Uh, to the area of the Salton Sea region. Um, I do have a seismograph station picking up the activity down there. That's going to be the, one of these earthquakes right here. Looks like there was maybe a couple smaller ones in there as well near the Barrett station in Southern California. Let's go ahead and check out the latest data here from the USGS map showing some movement again uh, near the Salton Sea area. Now this is just to the west here of Salton City. We have been noticing a little swarm of activity here, specifically within this region over the last couple days. Uh, looks like seismic pressure has increased in the Southern California region. Uh, this is right up against the San Andreas Fault here. That's gonna be the Southern segment here. It's been a while since we've seen any swarming on the Brawley seismic zone, but uh, regional stress is pretty high in this area of Southern California right now. 3.3 uh, coming in just a few minutes ago. That was quickly followed up by a 2.5. Uh, this could be uh, a part of an ongoing swarm that will uh, either just completely disappear or it could trigger the San Andreas Fault, the big one, or uh, it could just continue for a little bit um, with some small microquakes. So we will watch it pretty closely. I'm always adamant about um, watching this area specifically around the San Andreas Fault. All it takes is a little nudge uh, to get this baby going. Uh, we're talking about 8.1 or greater on this segment of the San Andreas Fault. We have not seen any full ruptures here of this segment uh, in over 300 years. So we know the stress is there. We know uh, that accumulated uh, slip rate uh, has been built up for that for that many years i mean so it's it's wound up as tight as she will go and then some so the intervals here supposed to be uh oh what is every 150 200 years or so um so we're way over that and uh that's that's why i'm always watching this region for some swarming and some quakes so today a 3.3 that's kind of on the um a little bit larger than the microquake size so that's kind of why I'm watching this area, Southern California. Uh, I'm putting an earthquake watch out right now uh, for this area of Southern California. Uh, some further movement down south here in the um, border area, the Mexicali region. This area did see some swarming as well within the last week or so. Uh, let's bring up the seven days, all magnitudes here. And we can kind of see some of this activity. I think it's been over a week. But either way, there was quite a, a big cluster of quakes here over a week ago or so in this region. Uh, but looking at the last seven days of activity, notice some increasing movement here along the Brawley seismic zone, stretching up into the San Andreas Fault as well. A lot of times, and I notice that the USGS does this a lot, is they'll put these earthquakes on the map after the fact. Uh, sometimes a day or so after the earthquakes take place. That way it doesn't look like there's, you know, stuff about ready to happen. Or maybe like a prelude to uh, the full rupture here of the uh, southern segment of the uh, San Andreas Fault. Looking specifically in this area uh, where the swarming is right now, of course, just to the west, southwest, a couple miles, we had a pretty good swarm of activity. Got about 41 earthquakes or so within the last week around the Salton, sea, uh, Salton City area. And uh, some of these earthquakes are... Um, deep some of them are shallow so a very wide variable um, of the depths there of these earthquakes let's go back to the last 30 days see what we got in this region it does add quite a bit more notice we did see some uh, prior swarming here a little bit further east and north of the Salton City area um, and some obvious activity over here around the uh, Brawley seismic zone and we even did have a couple small earthquakes at the southern end of the San Andreas Fault. I think these are the ones here that they put on after the fact, after um, the earthquake struck about a day or so. Because I would have noticed that. I think I would have seen that um, come in onto the live map. So uh, activity has definitely been increasing pretty dramatically there, folks. So 
just a heads up for Southern California. Be on watch here with this activity kicking up. So movement into the, uh, looks like the Carson Long Beach area as well. A couple small microquakes, but uh, pretty deep down below the surface here at about 14 kilometers. This area has seen quite a bit of deep activity over the past few months here. So a whole lot going on dynamically. Of course, we had seen a, a bunch of movement yesterday up and down around the Nazca plate and the Pacific plate area. Um, seen a couple fours kind of spread out here. I know there was more than what the USGS is showing here. Uh, so activity has definitely been kind of working its way up there to Southern California. I think that's kind of what we're seeing right now uh, with the um, kind of the work around motion type deal. All right, guys. Um, I wanted to point that out real quick because I think it's uh, pretty important to take notes of swarms here in the Southern California region. Um, I will be back a little bit later on this afternoon, uh, this evening with a complete update. But for now, I wanted to get this info out. It is kicking up a little bit. And uh, these earthquakes that just came in are relatively shallow, uh, about two to four kilometers there for these earthquakes near the Salton, C uh, Salton City area. And again, just to the west of the San Andreas Fault, 300 and something years, I think 322 years, somewhere around there. Very similar to the Cascadia subduction zone up here. It's been about uh, 322 years since the 1700 rupture. So could this go hand in hand? Could we have a trigger of the Cascadia uh, from the San Andreas Fall? I, it's hard to say exactly, but it's kind of odd that both of these areas haven't seen any major ruptures uh, in roughly about the same time frame. A little odd. So, all right, guys, we'll chat you a little bit later on this afternoon uh, with a complete update unless something changes. Uh, but definitely for now, going to issue a Southern California earthquake watch here uh, with this ongoing activity that we've seen again out here around the Easter Island area up through the uh, Pacific and the Nazca Plate area, the Cocos Plate region and areas up now into the Gulf and Southern California. So just kind of a, you know, kind of painting a little picture of some unzipping there, uh, so to speak. So we will watch it pretty closely and uh, of course provide any updates should anything else happen there. But for now, the closest station to this area is going to be this station here in Southern California, Barrett Station. That's one monitoring activity there in the uh, Southern California area. All right, guys, we'll chat you a little bit later on.